DeAndre, back in fall camp, we asked Garrett 2J to describe himself, compare himself to some of his offensive linemen. He said he's mostly like you because he's smooth and suave, and he's got a little bit of Braden Kersley in him. How would you assess that from Coach 2J? Oh, man, that, I mean, that's a good assessment. I never, you know, would have thought of that. Um, yeah, he is. He tries to come off smooth sometimes, but he doesn't play it as well as me. But he tries to come off smooth sometimes, but he, he gets nasty like Braden. Braden's a nasty guy, so, and Braden's definitely not as smooth as I am. So, uh, I mean, it's a good assessment. I like okay. it. <laughs> What's the difference been in offensive line play this year versus last year? Uh, more technique sound, more aggressive. Um, having that confidence and, you know, knowing that we can play with anybody on the field. So I feel like that's the biggest jump from last year to this year. What's the transition like, too, been from go fast, go hard, like, hey, this is different, to it seems like you guys have geared down a little bit. Um, well, I feel like the, the, the go fast, go hard was more just because we were inexperienced and just to get us going. I feel like that's our, that was our main key for last year. This year it's more just being technical and, and knowing our assignments and knowing – like what's going to come next. I feel like that's that's the biggest jump because we, we go hard. We go fast. It's just now it's just you have to do it with technique. You have to do it with skill. I know as a fan it's it's been an interesting uh, ride for BYU Sports Nation to look at what BYU football has done. As a player, though, the emotions and the roller coaster that this team has been through, how has that been for you? Man, it, it just shows like this team has been through a lot of adversity and it shows how strong we are as a team that – you know, we do, we lose, like, our best player on our team, and, you know, we have to go out and we have to keep fighting. And starting from scratch with Stu, pretty much, we have to keep fighting and go out because we still have games to play and we still have, you know, to prove ourselves to the nation that we are, that we are good. And so that's, I feel like it's one of the things that I've learned about this team. That's what I've learned about this coaching staff, that these guys, we, we fight. You know, we are, we're fighters, and no matter what, we're going to keep fighting and we're going to keep playing. Is the team over the shock of losing Taysom? Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can never like, look, like, you can, do you see how that guy plays? Like, that's, it's unbelievable some of the things he does, but, you know, you got to move on. You just, things that you got to do, you got to move on, you got to get past it. And Stu is our quarterback now, and, and dude, he impresses me. Like, that, that kid takes shots, and he just bounces up, dude, and he will sling it like 60 yards the next play. It's, it's unreal sometimes, but, you know, just the different styles of play, but it's still the same outcome, you know, it's still scoring, still winning, winning games. So I feel like it's a, it's a, we had to get over the shot. Was there a point where you felt like that happened or is it still happening? Um, I don't know, I just feel like, I feel like it just happened, you know, it happened and it's like, it was, it was a shocker at first, but you know, after a while, like you say, you gotta, you gotta play, you gotta go out, you gotta play, he's not coming back. Well, not this season anyway, but he's, he's not coming back until you gotta play. What kind of conversations have you had with Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams and Jordan Johnson, these guys that uh, are out for the season? Oh man, um, Taysom, it was more. It was more of he was. He, he's just like he's so mad he can't play with us, you know. Like he, he that he that he's down. He feels like he's a part of the team, but he just wants to go out and battle with us. And that was, I feel like that was really emotional, you know. It was like, it, yeah, it's like coming, like I've never had a season in, in, in ending injury before. So I honestly, I couldn't come. I don't know what perspective they're coming from, but you know, just listening, listening to some of the things that they were saying and it's, it's like unreal. You just like know that your season is done and you have to wait until the next year. And some people for the seniors that did get hurt, like Brock and Jordan, like, you know, that's, that's it. Like they're, that's see their season's over. Their college career is over. So. It's it's kind of unreal, you know. Just think about it, it's kind of unreal. On the other end of that, you have a bunch of your freshman offensive line mates, uh, Karoma and Lapuahu and Kanuch as a sophomore. What's it been like for you as a senior to kind of lead that group? Dude, it's, it's exciting because those those guys are only going to get better. You know, it's their first year of college, like Division One football, and just to know that those kids are only going to get better. And so I can't wait to see how they develop and how they mature as men and come out and ball out in front of 65,000 people every year for the next three years anyway. I've noticed a couple of plays this year where you have destroyed some guys on the line. One specifically, I believe, was the Nevada game when you opened up a huge hole for Paul Lasique to run in for a touchdown. Do you get enough credit for those plays from your teammates? Uh, you know, it's it's not really about, like, the credit because, it's like, you know, online we don't score. So it's just, like, more – I feel like it's more of me representing, you know, 
my O-line and like my O-line coach, my offensive coordinator, for putting me in that position to make that play. I feel like that's all it's about is just going out and represent for you know BYU like you said your teammates and your coaches you know for putting you in that position to make that play so I really don't look at you know oh I should have been noticed for this or I should have been noticed for that it's not about that it's just about going out and playing and having the opportunity to go out and make a play like that I feel like that's that's all the credit I need just having an opportunity but do you get enough affirmation to be happy oh yeah yeah uh, <laughs> I like after the game, my mom, she sent me like this huge long text like, I cannot believe that you killed that kid like that. <laughs> <laughs> she was she was excited. She was like, it, I was unbelievable. Like one of the things I, she's like, I've never seen anything like that before. So, you know, that's pretty much all I need. Is, you know, my mom, that's pretty much all I need. Mom will do it. Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask, the pink socks, man. It's It's just... A pink day today. I don't know. Is this from Jamal's closet? No, no, definitely not. <laughs> These are from mine. Yeah, I just, I don't know. It's probably like it's a pink day today. So Can you, happy day. What do you think of the blackout? Oh, man, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I, well, they, we didn't do the blackout last year. In 2012, they did. And, you know, I was excited. I thought 2013 we we're going to do it. But, man, I can't wait. That's, that's going to be sick, man. A matte black helmets in front of 65,000 people wearing all black. It's going to be nice. Pretty good. Getting to a bowl game became, became something maybe a little more important this year given the four-game losing streak. What's that going to mean uh, when you guys beat UNLV to get to a bowl? Uh, it's, uh, relief. Uh, That's what everyone says. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, the, we, get, we get to play one more game, especially as a senior, I get to play one more game. A um, little swag never hurt. Yeah, a little swagger. Always a little swagger, a little swag. Um, uh, I mean, the swag from the bowl game. Oh, well. Yeah. Legal gifts. It's, and it's in Miami. I mean, that's right. true. And Miami. That's, that's, I've never been to Miami, so I can't wait to see what that's like. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's just relief. I just, I guess I get promised one more game of college football. And so that's what, that's what I'm looking forward to. Let's talk about your last two destinations with this BYU football team. You already brought up Miami. You got to get bowl eligible. You can do that against UNLV. But then the last regular season game is in your neck of the woods. You're a Northern California guy at Cal Berkeley. What does it mean to you to play your last regular season game basically in front of your, uh, your family in your hometown? Oh, man, it'd be really exciting. Uh, I have a lot of people that are coming to this game. Uh, you know, I, I pretty much have to play like my best game because if not, I'm going to hear it right after the game. But it's, it's exciting. I, I've always dreamed of playing at Cal, you know, as a kid. And, now I get to play there, but I'm just on another team. So I feel like it's even better because I'm on another team. So um, I, I just can't wait, man. Just be in that stadium. They rebuild it, and I just can't wait to play against Cal. It'd be nice. How many requests have you had for tickets? <sighs> man, I'm like that. I'm looking at like 12, 12 tickets and probably looking for more. Um, I'm, please, if anybody, help me. <laughs> 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 Sports Nation could provide. <laughs> I need tickets, please. But yeah, man, it's, yeah, I'm looking for a lot. Yeah, not a lot of people coming. DeAndre, thanks. Good luck against UNLV. Appreciate it. Thank you.